Hi everyone, this presentation is about K's distinctive capabilities of organizational success by Mary Jorienza, Tim Funk, and Michael Shannon. So what exactly is this theory? Well, it originated from John Kay back in 1993. John Kay is a leading British business economist. His theory regarding the success of an organization focuses on not just the management and creation of contracts, but that of the people and of the relationships developed. The three distinctive relational capabilities are architecture, reputation, and innovation. These capabilities allow a company to achieve success or a competitive advantage. To begin with, let's define organizational success. What is organizational success? There really is no Webster definition for this phrase. According to Kay, however, organizational success revolved around gaining a greater output than what was put in in the first place. Organizational success depends on an organization to make timely, knowledge-based decisions. In essence, these two factors bring value to the organization. That, more than anything, is organizational success, the ability to bring value to a company, to its organization, and to its structure. Architecture is the first distinctive capability we will talk about today. Defined, architecture is a network of relational contracts within or around the organization, with employees, which are the internal, and with suppliers and customers, which are the external. The picture below displays a company's relationships. In more layman terms, however, it is management of relationships throughout a company. By managing or keeping relationships organized, be it with your employees or clients or other companies, more value is added to the organization. Architecture concerns organizational effectiveness in the search for the value that defines the company. Architecture also allows for individuals to focus on achieving organizational goals, which in the end bring more value to a company. The architecture of a company defines the firm. By maintaining a strong architecture, value is added through organizational knowledge and routines an easier and more open exchange of information, which leads to a greater willingness to cooperate between members of the organization, and lastly, there is a greater and much quicker flexibility to change. While the knowledge of an organization's architecture is important, as it leads to higher flexibility, it is just as important to know that the architecture of a company, its relational structures, stem from social and commercial values. Such values develop over time and within a company culture. Because of this, they are not easily changed. To compensate for this, architecture should rely on relational contracting for despite culture, there is always a collective interest to work together for the benefit of the organization. In structuring the routines, etc., efficiency is increased, coordination is improved, and the company is given a stronger competitive advantage. So, on to our next distinctive capability, reputation. It is the most important tool for relaying information to consumers in the beginning and the maintenance of a business relationship. According to Kay, a buyer and a seller enter into a prisoner's dilemma. The picture below depicts this dilemma. In this dilemma, selling a high quality for a high price is fair for both the buyer and the seller. It is when overselling and underselling takes place that discontent starts. Overselling is selling low quality for a high price, which is a great profit for the seller, but a bad experience for the buyer. And underselling is bad for the seller because it ruins their profit margin, even though it is a good deal for the buyer. Selling low quality for low prices is also ineffective, as it leaves both the buyer and the seller at a loss, and a gain in wasted time. Fairness is definitely the way to go. Reputation affects the long-term good. These are the products in which quality is rated very highly for a customer. However, the knowledge of whether or not the product is or is not high quality is one that can only be defined over time and experience. When both factors are involved, reputation is developed and thus helps to reassure the buyer in future choices of this particular brand, because then he or she will already know the high quality of the brand due to the time and experience given to this long-term good, when it could not have been so easily determined before. With good reputation, fewer resources are needed to maintain. This, however, can only be effective if the quality of the product is not conceded. Innovation is our last distinctive relational capability. The phrase last but not least cannot be easily applied to this capability. 
for unlike the other two, innovation is not successfully translated into competitive advantage. This failure is rooted in three issues, costs and uncertainty of innovation process, innovation management, and appropriate allocation of rewards. The innovation process is costly because it is so risky. There is, un there is such uncertainty regarding the product because there is no data or past knowledge of the product to forecast demand for competition. Two variances of the prisoner's dilemma are the chicken game and the standards game. Both display the uncertainty regarding innovation and the costs that go along with it. Take a look at the diagram below. In the chicken game, there is the assumption that the innovation will be successful. The outcome could only have a winner between the two competitors if one competitor holds back. In holding back, that company fails while the other wins. With the standards game, it is an all-or-nothing dilemma. Sometimes a product requires another product to be successful. It needs a standard. Nobody wins if there is not a standard, and everyone wins if there is. An example of this is hardware and software. Without the other, there really is no point in winning. This lack of knowledge leads to innovation management. How much does one give to innovation? How much does one hold back? What is the standard that will define this? According to K, one could commit to their innovation and not back off. In doing so, one would need a strong reputation. Apple, for instance, because of its reputation, can bring forth innovation after innovation, because its reputation is regarded so highly that even if some innovation fails, they will still win because of the reputation of their brand. They also displayed another winning strategy, being the first to market a smartphone, and they were the first to do so. That is a winning strategy for innovation. Lastly, the appropriate allocation of rewards is an issue because it is unsure whether the innovation was worth the effort or not. To sum it up, these distinctive values are simply not simple. They cannot be cut and copy to find. They are hard to create and maintain, hard to codify or make into recipes. They can't be emulated and they can't be bought off the shelf. They grow within an organization and those within learn and grow alongside these values. But to have these values, organizational architecture, reputation, and innovation brings any organization a fundamental source of advantage, of advantage. It brings advantage because in identifying the distinctive capabilities of any organization within Kate's framework allows for the company to better understand its success and failures in its past and present to then better prepare for its future. It also helps to understand the values currently held within the company. Understanding the company's values, which are, in essence, the people of the company's values, allow for a more structured approach to increase competitiveness in the workplace and make competition more desirable. Lastly, this long quote is from John Kay. In essence, Kay explains his theory of distinctive relational capabilities for organizational success. To be successful, one must stand out and be distinct, and that comes from maintaining the architecture of one's contracts and relationships within a company. It comes from the maintenance of one's reputation. And lastly, it comes from the ability to innovate and manage innovation so that one's company can achieve success and hone its competitive advantage.